Welcome to another FAQ Monday. I am your host, Fluff. Uh, I am coming to you from my living room because it is super, super hot upstairs in the studio. About 120 degrees if I had to uh, make a super scientific judgment. Um, I love you guys, but I don't 120 degrees like you. More like 98 degrees like you. <laughs> oh, God. First question. Which companies do you endorse? Was it hard to get endorsed? Um, I only actually officially legitimately endorse a few things. Uh, the Jimmy Clip, uh, Clear Tone Strings, uh, Positive Grid, and their apps. And I think that's about it. Um, everything else is, you know, it's usually a, a handshake and a wink kind of a thing. Uh, companies will typically uh, give you inexpensive or free stuff um, in exchange for playing their stuff uh, in a video if you have a large audience. And typically that is uh, misconstrued by the public as, oh, you got an endorsement because it gave you a guitar. That's not how it works. Uh, an endorsement is a business decision by the company and nothing more. Um, endorsements just kind of happen and you can seek them out but more often than not, it's usually just a series of circumstances and then you end up with uh, knowing someone and they like you and they offer you an endorsement. It's really like that. It's kind of strange. Hey man, is there already a difference between the PV's 5150 series and the 6505 series? Which version do you prefer? The first ones, 5150, 6505, or the second, 5152 and 6505 plus. 6534 plus is out of the comparison. Smiley face. Well, I think you guys are old enough and it's time we had the 5150 talk. Uh, let's go through all the iterations and I will explain to you the differences between all of the 5150 and 6505 amps. Now the short answer is there is no differences. Um, I have owned all of the versions at the same time in years past and AB'd them all together through the same cab, guitar. There is no difference at all. <clears throat> However, uh, the original block letter 5150s shipped with what was left of a new old stock tube set um, that PV had. Um, so the block letters shipped with old uh, Svetlana uh, power tubes. And they got a cease and desist order from a company saying the block letter logo looked too similar to theirs. Um, and around the same time they ran out of new stock tubes so they changed the logo to the signature front. Uh, on the panel and use new production tubes at the same time. Now people correlate that with, oh, the block letters sounded better. Well, they did from the factory, but that was 20, over 20 years ago. And that no longer applies today because the tubes have long been changed out. Um, that is the only difference that is from PV themselves, um, I've asked them. And the only difference between a regular single channel 5150 and a 5152 is an extra preamp tube and the extra uh, EQ, the separate EQ for each channel, for the lead channel. Um, that is it. And the 6505 and the 6505 Plus are identical to the 5150 Cousins. They just had to change the name because, you know, Eddie Van Halen left PB. Uh, PB kept all the design. It's all the same. I get questions all the time asking me, which one should I get, a 6505 or a 5150? Same amp, whichever one you can find cheapest. Do you play video games? What's your favorite by far? Actually, uh, when I have time, which is rare these days. Um, I do play video games, and the last video game I got super into was the newest Battlefield um, for PS3. Um, it's PS, the Battlefield 4, I think? Yeah, it's also out on the, the PS4, but uh, I'm still old school in it with the PS3. Uh, the Battlefield 4 game was mind-blowingly good. Um, but previous to that, um, I was just a big Call of Duty guy. Um, I liked to run and gun, and uh, me and my 12 year old daughter um, I like to set up bots and uh, I make them pretty easy for her and we go around uh, as a daddy daughter team and we uh, we go and shoot the evil uh, robots and uh, she talks smack to the TV it's hilarious and uh, that's about it I'm, I'm not a huge like oh you gotta you gotta get the the newest fable or something like that I'm not like my daughter um, she's a huge gamer and uh, I just like to shoot stuff sometimes, man. That's all. What is the most terrifying slash most nervous show you've ever played? I think I played mine earlier today. Haha, <laughs> keep riffing, man. Um, even though it only lasted briefly, the most terrified I ever was up until we walked on stage was uh, playing the main stage at uh, a place called the Everett Event Center here in Washington. 
Uh, holds about 5,000 people, and it was the very first year of the Taste of Chaos tour. That's like an indoor warp tour. And we were opening for uh, the used uh, My Chemical Romance, Kill Switch Engage, and uh, Static Lullaby and Seozen. And um, that was, that was hor horrifying. And see, I even started just thinking about it now. Um, but when you walk on stage and there's 5,000 people screaming for you, um, it's pretty cool. And then it just kind of goes away and you just have a good time. And that was a very awesome experience. Uh, that was about 2005, uh, Kill Switch Engage had just released uh, The End of Heartache. And The Used had just released uh, In Love and Death. And it was just an uh, amazing, amazing show. And uh, I think about it not infrequently. What software do you use for your video editing? Um, well, recently I just switched to Adobe Premiere and the entire Adobe Suite um, for a few reasons, which I'll get to in just a second. But I started out editing um, in 2005 uh, with Final Cut 6, and then I moved to Final Cut 7. And then I took many years off and didn't edit commercials or films or anything like that. And that's as kind of a pain gig, but not that wasn't my day job. And then I got into this YouTube thing and I picked up Final Cut Pro 10, and that has served me very, very well. But there are some limitations to Final Cut Pro 10. For example, the moving borders that you guys sometimes see in my, uh, my videos, you have to manually drag those over. And if you want to turn one 90 degrees, for example, you have to turn it and hope that it snaps to 90 degrees and a huge amount of time Final Cut Pro will snap to 91 degrees or 89 degrees and not do what you want it to do and you can't enter a hard, hard value for that kind of stuff or um, if you want to crop something. If you crop too fast, um, it will crash the program and I can't enter a hard value to the amount of crop I want in an image, for an example. These are just various examples. Um, Adobe Premiere allows you full functionality. It's closer to Final Cut 7 and how that used to be. And I really want to up my video game. Um, I want to be the best visually at guitar and gear demos. I want to start introducing cool, subtle effects and stuff like that. Like if I'm you know, if I'm playing, if I have a cool shot and the head sucks going up and down, the spec is like tracking with it and stuff like that. So for that reason, um, I want to start learning After Effects. And it just made sense to just get the Creative Cloud from Adobe and get the whole suite and speed grade and Lightroom and all that stuff. So I'm invested in Adobe now. Um, I absolutely love it. I've used it for several weeks now. Last couple of videos you guys have seen have been in uh, Adobe Premiere. I'm getting the hang of it. It's like riding a bike um, coming from Final Cut 7. Um, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's fantastic, and I kept myself for not doing it sooner. Hey, Ryan, why do you prefer two-channel reactives instead of the three-channel? Well, there are huge differences between the, the two-channel and the three-channel. Um, I have owned most iterations of the dual rectifier. I've owned uh, a Rev-E, Rev-D, um, Rev-G, obviously. I've owned several regular two-channels. I've owned uh, the multi-watt. I've owned a regular three-channel. I have owned a three-channel FJA modded. Um, Mesa Boogie. Um, the only one I have not owned is the Rectifier. Um, but the three channels, to make a long story short, are fizzy. They are fizzy and they're muddy. Now the first generation of the three channels are extremely muddy. Um, the newest generation of multi-watt are very, very, very fizzy. They, they sound like a fuzz box to me. They're just I don't know. Um, I might get one in the future and like mod the crap out of it and see how far I can take it if I were to get one cheap. But uh, the two channels are just are, are warm and succulent and not fizzy. And they're detailed and they're dynamic and they're just, they have this kick coming out of the amp that is just um, classic. And it's just, to me, it's what I look for. You know, I, don't, I have to work less hard hitting the strings because it's doing all the work for me, whereas I find the three channels to be, you know, you really have to work to make them sound good, and I just, uh, I don't take that. But it's just a personal preference. I mean, those amps are great amps. People get lots of good tones out of them, but everyone used the two channel, and no one's using the three channel, so what does that tell you? At any rate, it is time to go, guys. Uh, thank you once again for joining me. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to leave them down below in the comments or my little Ask FM account thing also in the description. And... I'm your host, Fluff. Thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
Thank you. And I will see you next week.